All right, guys. Um, Thursday morning here, and uh, we're gonna do some work on the back side of the fender uh, or the uh, wheel arch panels that I put in. We're gonna clean up that weld zone. I had had some comments several videos ago when I was doing those about how I was gonna address that weld zone on the back and make sure it was, uh, let's say, weatherproof, to say the least. And uh, I've got a light down there, and I'm going to show you. Uh, it's going to be tricky. There's no two ways about it. I'm going to get down on the creeper here. I'm going to show you what we got. We can see that weld zone up in there. It does have weld through primer uh, on the back, even though it looks like it's... Uh, sort of sanded off there's actually weld through primer on that and what I'm gonna do we're gonna take a wire brush and we're gonna clean that up a little bit and then what I'm gonna do is uh, brush some epoxy up in there and you're probably thinking to yourself okay well here's the exhaust pipe how the hell are you gonna get up in there well you gotta be a little bit on the creative side when you do stuff like this um, there's no easy way to do it that I know of so what I've done I've got a uh, wire brush here and I've got it zip tied to a piece of uh, CPVC so I have an extended reach and I don't have to get all the way up in there. And I'll probably wrap some tape around that too so it doesn't spin around. But uh, this is just to get anything loose off of there. And then I'll probably tape um, an acid brush to the end of that or I'll put some in my little touch up gun and uh, just bomb that area. and. It should uh, it should stick to that. Um, the other thing I can do is squirt some etch up in there in the rattle can, and then we're going to put some seam sealer as far as I can reach up in there, and we're going to clean all that up. So that uh, we don't have any further problems with that. And then I will take I have this get it out of my shelf here sorry about the shaky cam I have that undercoating gun and uh, it's got this little fan nozzle on the end of it here and we'll fill that with um, I think I might try that uh, 3M rust fighter the wax based or I may, uh, I have a lot of different choices here. This is, I believe, a wax base too. This is the clear rust free for inner panel. And we have this rust free, which is the rubberized. Um, I don't know which way I'm going to go yet, but after I seam seal that up and that cures, that whole area will just be bombed with that so that it's uh, coated real good up in there. And, uh, be able to have that somewhat secure. I don't think it'll ever be 100% perfect, but we're going to get it as close as possible. Here's the epoxy right there. I got it sitting in this chair and the heater was blowing on it to make sure it was warm. But yeah, I'm going to take that wire brush and I'm going to get up in there the best that I can. So this isn't going to be much of a how-to. This is kind of a I'll give you an idea of how I'm going to do it and I'll show you before and after because there's nowhere to put that camera. So I'm going to get to it here. I wasn't going to do anything today but that's one of those projects I've been sort of putting off because I don't uh, don't have an easy way to do it. If I could have just wham bammed it I'd be done with it already. So I'm going to get to it. We'll talk to you in a bit. Alright guys I got some epoxy mixed up here. Uh, a couple ounces probably three four ounces uh, in a cup. And I've made an apparatus with which to apply it so I can reach way up in that uh, wheel arch. I've got a two inch chip brush here because it's what I had laying around for disposable. The, um, the acid brushes would work but this is wider and uh, I'm thinking that'll probably work a little better. I have two paint paddles taped together so that we have a, uh, a longer reach here. So we're going to basically dip in there and reach in there. I don't care what it looks like as long as my area is covered. And uh, 
sealed up pretty good. So that's just kind of an idea of what I'm going to do here. And again, I can't hold the camera and do all this with you guys. Uh, I wish I could show you, but I'm going to show you the after. Um, but you got an idea, at least a little bit of, uh, you know, how we're going to attempt to do this. Um, shouldn't, shouldn't be too bad, but it's probably not going to be super easy either. Um, just going to have to take my time and make sure I get it done. So I'll bring you guys back uh, in a little bit once I get that applied, just to kind of give you an idea how I'm doing it. See ya. All right, this is give you an idea of what I'm doing. You can see that we've got epoxy on that weld zone. Sorry about the bright light, but it's the only way we can get up in there to see it. And we've got some scale over there. And uh, when I uh, rust proof this truck, I will uh, get that all washed out of there. There's some road grime and garbage up in there. And uh, we'll spray that real good with the oil undercoating. So that's what we're trying to do here. And I'm going to get as far as I can seam sealing that. Um, I can reach almost all the way to the center. It's just real tight in there. And then uh, at some point here, we're going to clean up these wheel wells and scuff them and probably shoot some uh, Raptor liner up in there. Um, we'll get, uh, get those cleaned up, get that patch seam sealed on this side, and uh, get epoxy over any of that bare metal. We'll see how we decide to do it. I'm not exactly sure 100% yet how I'm going to do it. But that's ultimately my goal, to do it that way. So, just a quick uh, how this is getting done. As you can see, there's not a lot of room here. So for me to hold a camera and to uh, get my arm up in there, I mean, I'm having to slide. You know, I start putting my hand up in here, you won't be able to see anything. So that's uh, step one of how I'm going to rust-proof this backside the best I can. So there you go. All right, guys, uh, you saw earlier we epoxied the backsides of those uh, wheel arch repair panels. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I've got some sealer mixed up, which has nothing to do with those panels. This is going to be for spot sealing the hood, and uh, I'll let this sit overnight because I know I'm going to get some trash in it, and I want a nice smooth surface. I'll go ahead and uh, sand it in the morning. And uh, if you don't have one of these... These are pretty inexpensive. I think I paid 20 bucks for it. This is a Harbor Freight. You know, you see the brand there. Um, little scale. And they have a couple different varieties. They have like a pocket scale variety, which uh, doesn't work for this application at all. Um, I think those are more uh, to do with like jewelry and small stuff. Um, at the price, if I get paint all over it or drop it and break it, um, you know, so be it. It is a battery powered scale. Uh, one thing I don't like about it is if you walk away from it for a couple minutes, it'll time out and shut off. Um, but it's got the tear button on here and all that. And for mixing small quantities, if you don't have a mixing cup, uh, and you can just kind of guess by eye as far as quantity that you're going to need, um, of course, you pour your product in there. And this sealer is a four to one. So, um, I put it in there and uh, with the cup setting on the scale and uh, when the cup's empty you hit the tear button and it'll zero out the scale so you're just measuring the weight of the product you have in there and then you kinda gotta do some uh, some quick math so uh, I put 2.85 ounces uh, weight wise in this cup and then uh, just use a calculator real quick and uh, did some quick math to figure out uh, what one part of that would be. So at four to one, that's 25%. So you figure out what 25% of that uh, that number of the first product you have is in there, and uh, then you go ahead and you can either hit tear on the scale um, helps to write that first number down because if you're doing a four to one to one, um, I think it was 2.85 uh, ounces of the first product, and then like 0.7 ounces of the other um, so you'll need 0.7 ounces of your activator and 0.7 ounces of your uh, reducer because this is a 4 to 1 to 1 so 
that's a nifty little tool for like 20 bucks see it just went off so if you don't do anything it'll actually turn itself off and it's also um, it came with a cord too I've had this for about eight months now there's instructions and there's the cord so if you have a place to plug it in uh, what I bought this for was measuring chemicals um, by weight uh, copper sulfate to be exact for treating algae in lakes and you can measure uh, measure that up so what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and uh, wipe this hood down and uh, I'm not I'm sort of undecided whether I'm going to spot seal all the areas or just the areas where I have a breakthrough and honestly I only have like three areas where it broke through that being one of them it's down to the etch I had to spot a little etch there because I had bare metal and then I have this one where I hit the base coat I think we're going to uh, just go ahead and spot seal those three areas which means I mixed way too much but that's okay because it was a small enough batch that uh, I'm figure out where the tripod is uh, it was a small enough batch that uh, that really doesn't bother me to have wasted that teeny tiny little bit um, no big deal so we're going to leave you right there I gotta go get some white balls down with some glass cleaner try if you can and follow behind uh, where you've wiped off before it dries with a dry towel, preferably a lint free type towel. It's got the temp up to about 80 degrees in here. Uh, it's only 35 outside today which is a beautiful thing. Uh, it takes a lot less effort to get it warm in here. Undecided whether I'm going to paint this today. I've already got it kind of warming here. I hate to waste the fuel now that I've got it kind of warm. But I do need to remask this hood so I can't paint it with this dirty ass paper on it. Or should I say I prefer not to? I'm just going to use the spot gun 
and we're going to get that done. So we've got the little Devildis right there. strainer out. Perfect. Put the sealer activator back in the cabinet. Now I always strain it before I put it in these little disposable cups. Um, you truly don't need to because there is a screen inside these, but I do anyway. just about right at three ounces weight wise but liquid wise it's just a little under because this is a three ounce cup all right we got to get a regulator and this out. A lot of times I'll just hand tighten these uh, regulators on, but uh, this one, I'm going to give it a little extra snug down. I feel like listening to it. So let's go out and do this. That should keep you guys in the in the picture here. So I'll adjust this down up real quick. Um, I'm going to narrow the fan down on it, which means you definitely don't need much air pressure. But you, if you don't have your air coming out, you won't have any air pressure. So I got to do that. Hang on. try this I got it about 12 pounds and my fans real skinny 
got to make sure you don't pull the trigger all the way or you'll have a big old run. do all the small spots first and then I'll come back and I'll widen the fan and do the bigger areas.
there's a couple reasons I'm doing this spot sealing because I'm going to show you what just happened over here even though this was feather edged properly I don't like the way it looks I'm sure the camera will pick it up see the line in that right there that should not be happening if that's feather edged right and uh, either I didn't get it quite right or uh, it's grabbing the edge of that repair and mapping it out everything else looks okay so far maybe a teeny bit right there but we'll go ahead and we'll block this with 600 tomorrow to get the trash out of it uh, for me there's like no way to keep the damn trash out of this stuff front of that looks okay all these other repairs seem to look pretty good too but uh, yeah that's kind of my last step um, since I've had some problems before uh, just to make sure that it's okay even though it felt good and looked good it wasn't um, and the sealer you'll be able to see through it if you just put one coat on which is recommended so when it dries I mean you will still see that repair a tiny bit but uh, it should hold it down good so uh, that's kind of where that's at when this dries I'll go ahead and hit that with some 600 wet so that'll be a tomorrow project no big deal and uh, hopefully we'll get to doing that get it finished up then so you saw I mixed up three ounces of, of uh, sealer let's see what we have left hold on one second I'm gonna flip you guys you're gonna be looking at the ceiling squeezed out what was left in the uh, disposable liner there that's where we're at so let's uh, find the scale on the side of this uh, maybe uh, ounce and a half left so only took an ounce and a half to put one coat on that so that's where that's at I just want to show you that real quick. I'm going to get the gun cleaned up, and that's it for today. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll catch you.